Hello everyone. Welcome to the teaching show. In the last video, we had started a new topic on combustion. So in this video, we are going to take an example on combustion. This was the problem which appeared in GATE 1996. The problem statement is given in the description box for your um, convenience. What I'm going to do is I will briefly explain the problem. Okay, so there is an unknown hydrocarbon which is burnt. And it is completely burnt so that you get only carbon dioxide and no carbon monoxide is appearing. Okay. The Orset analysis gives you that carbon dioxide is 10.81%, oxygen is 3.78% and nitrogen is 85.41% in the flue gases which are coming out. Since this is an Orset analysis, it is on dry basis. So, I don't know how much water is coming out. Okay. Then, um, it doesn't tell you anything about how much oxygen or nitrogen you are using. But the question asks you to find out how much percentage excess of air is used and what is the ratio of carbon to hydrogen in the fuel. Okay, so with this information, we are going to solve this problem. I told you, the first step is to select the basis. Since we know uh, the composition of the dry flue gases which are coming out so we will take our basis as 100 moles of dry flue gas okay so water part is not included what i will do is now then uh, directly convert my percentages into moles because i am taking a basis as 100 moles of dry flue gas so that means i have 10.81 moles of carbon dioxide 3.78 moles of oxygen and 85.41 moles of nitrogen. Okay, after selecting the basis, we also have a fully labeled flowchart that I have prepared for you. I don't know what amount of water is being formed, so I labeled it as a variable N3. I don't know how much oxygen and nitrogen is going in, so N1 and N2. And also I don't know what is the ratio of carbon to hydrogen and also the amount of this fuel which is going in. So we will directly label it as x moles of carbon which is being burnt and y moles of hydrogen because this, in the problem it is given that it is a hydrocarbon. So we are going to say that it is made up of only carbon and hydrogen where you have x moles of carbon and y moles of hydrogen. Okay. So uh, we are going to use atomic species balance to solve this problem because it involves a reaction. Okay. So that seems to be a best choice. Okay, let's quickly do degree of freedom analysis on this. How many unknown variables do we have? X, Y, N1, N2 and N3. So I have five variables. Uh, how many independent atomic species balance I can write? I can write carbon balance, oxygen balance and hydrogen balance. So I have three independent atomic species balance. So minus three. Then how many inert species balance I have? One which is nitrogen. It doesn't take part in your combustion. So I have one inert species balance again minus one. Then I have one more process specification for combustion reactions. You have to keep in mind that whenever you are using air, your nitrogen to oxygen ratio is fixed. So that is my one more process specification. So I have my degree of freedom that is 5 minus 3 minus 1 minus 1 that is equal to 0. So, we have ensured that this problem is completely specified and we can solve it. So, let's go by the methodology that we have developed. Okay. So, what I told you in all my previous videos that first of all, you have to go and take your inert species balance. Okay. So, what is my inert species? That is my nitrogen. So, I am going to take N2 balance. It will simply take the form of in is equal to out. Okay. What is in? That is N2. And out is 85.41 moles. So I directly get the value of N2. I am going to update my flow chart. It is 85.41 moles. Next, I told you always use whatever the process specifications you have. Now what process specification you have? You know the ratio of N1 by N2 that is 0 
upon 0 0.79. This is the ratio of oxygen to nitrogen. In the last video, I told you, uh, just consider that your air is made up of oxygen and nitrogen. Oxygen is 21%, nitrogen is 79%. So, I know the ratio between these two. If I use this ratio, since I know N2, I can find out my N1. Okay. So, my N1, using this process specification, it comes out to be 22.70 moles. So, I will update my, uh, let's just write moles. Okay. So, I am going to update my uh, flow chart again. It is 22.70 moles. So, I have used two equations and calculated two variables N1 and N2. Now, what I have left with is R3 independent atomic species balance. So, let's use them one by one. Okay. So, first I am going to use my oxygen balance. So, it's O balance. What is going in is 22.7 times 2 because this is atomic species. That should be equal to oxygen is coming out with carbon dioxide. So, 10.81 into 2 plus it's coming out the oxygen which is unreacted. So, it is 3.78 into 2 plus N3. Okay. So, my oxygen balance, atomic species O balance, it will directly give me how much N3, that is how much water is formed. And if you solve this equation, you get 16.22 moles. Okay. So, quickly I will update my flowchart. So, I have now three unknowns which I have calculated. Next, I will proceed and take carbon balance and hydrogen balance. Okay. So, let's take first carbon balance. How much carbon is going in? X moles is going in and that should be equal to the carbon which is coming out. So, it is 10.81 moles. Now, let's take hydrogen balance. How much hydrogen is going in? Y moles. That is equal to hydrogen which is coming out. Hydrogen is coming out only along with water. So that is equal to 2 times 16.22 and if you multiply it, you get that is equal to 32.44 moles. One thing which was asked in this question was, what is the ratio of carbon to hydrogen? Since you know how much carbon is going, how much hydrogen is going, you can simply take the ratio carbon to hydrogen that will be equal to x by y or 10.81 divided by 32.44 or if you simplify it, approximately it comes out to be 1 by 3. Okay. So, one part you have solved that is what is the carbon to hydrogen ratio in the fuel C1 and H3, probably it is C2, H6. Okay. So, your fuel is probably C2, H6. Now, we are going to solve the second part of the problem, which asks you to calculate how much air is used in excess. Okay. So, in order to find out the percentage excess of air, which I uh, told you in the last video that percentage excess of air is equal to the percentage excess of oxygen. Okay. So, uh, it is equally, it is equivalent if I find out percentage excess of air or percentage excess of oxygen. So, here I am going to find percentage excess of air or oxygen. Okay. It is simpler to find out in terms of oxygen. So, let us do that. Uh, Let's first understand, uh, again revise your uh, uh, this thing, formula for percentage excess of oxygen that is O2 which is supplied that is in minus O2 which is the theoretical amount which is required divided by O2 which is the theoretical requirement multiplied by 100. Okay. So, this is your percentage excess of oxygen. Now, O2 which is going in is equal to N1. We know that. But what is this theoretical oxygen? That we have to find out. Okay. How much it will be? Let's say 
simply you know you just uh, revise what was the definition of theoretical oxygen the uh, definition of theoretical oxygen was that when the uh, fuel it goes to complete combustion and the only product which is formed is carbon dioxide and water in this case no carbon monoxide is being formed so your fuel is going complete combustion and then since you do not have any uh, unbound hydrocarbon which is coming out okay so that means your combustion reaction is going to completion so whatever oxygen which is utilized in this reaction it is equal to your theoretical oxygen okay so my theoretical oxygen is basically then that is equal to oxygen which is consumed over here and what is the oxygen which is consumed that should be equal to in minus out that is 22.7 minus 3.78 moles that, that is the theoretical oxygen which is required if you do this math it comes out to be 18.92 moles now I know what is oxygen which is supplied what is the requirement so if I calculate percentage excess of oxygen that is equal to 22.70 which is supplied minus 18.92 that was the theoretical requirement divided by the theoretical requirement into 100 and that gives you approximately 20% okay so oxygen was supplied 20% in excess this is a very simple problem if you go by the methodology which we had developed choose a proper basis then second step is to properly label your flowchart I would have been in a fix if I had selected C6HY and then said that okay n number of moles are going in then it would have been a little difficult to solve the problem okay so it's very important that you choose a proper basis first and then you also make a fully labeled flowchart with all the variables fixed in such a way that it uh, simplifies your problem okay so uh, then you have the third step is to choose a proper balance which you have to take I could have taken molecular species balance but in this case since reaction is taking place atomic species balance is much easier to use and it gives you your answer within five steps okay so I hope you uh, understood the problem and always try to tackle any new problem using these steps. So thanks for watching and if you like this video please don't uh, forget to uh, subscribe to my channel and like the video. Thanks a lot.